PSD with you, tutorials and gaming. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, we're just about to uh, boot into the live session of GhostBSD XFCE Community Edition 19.09. I know I've already covered this in the uh, the main edition, which runs uh, Mate, but I thought I'd give the XFCE uh, one a spin. I don't normally do this, I only usually cover the uh, the main one, but, you know, let's be different and do something different for a change. I don't really use XFCE too much, so I don't know what's what or what should be expected, but we'll give it a go. And as usual, because I'm installing as a demo in VirtualBox, I'll use a VirtualBox uh, driver. Again, I've used, uh, as last time with the, the Mate edition, I installed onto real hardware on the DC5700. But for to demo the actual install, I'll use VirtualBox. The install is as it was uh, on the Mate edition. There's no difference really other than just the, the obvious difference in uh, desktop organization. You double click on the uh, install icon. Then it takes you to the, uh, presents you the language page. Right, go down to English UK. But these settings are actually carried on to the main install as, as it was on the, the Mate edition. It's, it's a pretty handy way of doing it. And select London and next uh, and because it's a desktop I'll go for UFS and click on that these are exactly the same uh, steps and uh, settings which I put onto the machine anyway leave them alone GPT and UFS plus SUJ so it's, your, your journaling is already there I load the BIOS only because it's the only operating system just put a simple password in Name. I mean, you've seen this a thousand times, so, you know, it's it's pretty run of the middle at the moment. And it's relatively simple. It's, uh, to the credit of GhostBSD developers, this is, you can't get any easier than this. And select SH as always. And that's it. Isn't that, I, I love the GhostBSD installer is brilliant. I do love it. Exactly the same steps. obviously skipped it it wasn't that quick and then we'll just uh, restart and what I'll do is I'll boot into the virtual box uh, session the installed session that is and we'll just have a very quick look at the default desktop uh, as it is uh, when it runs on the you know, on virtual box The reason for this is because the other one had been installed over a few days and uh, added things to it. GhostBSD XFCE uses XFCE 4.12. The latest one is 4.14. And it is out for FreeBSD, but obviously this was released before uh, that came out. But no doubt they'll probably update it. I'm not keen on the menu system. Um, Whisker menu, it... it, I'm, it the sort of like categories are on the right and the actual programs themselves on the left. Um, I'm going to leave it as it is because that's that's how it was intended. But I, I'm not keen on that layout. I find it it's difficult. The categories should be on the left and the the actual programs should be on the right. It just it feels more intuitive that way. I don't know if this looks um, as XFC should look. Uh, it, it, you know, to me it looks very basic, but that's that's one of the attractions, I suppose. Uh, it's only running 238 megabytes. I've just uh, booted up. 
I know that's not a measure of anything, but it does show you how lightweight XFCE is and why it's loved by many people. It's all very good. And that amount of memory um, is pretty much close to what you'll see when I first boot into the uh, DC5700. Which we will do in a minute. There we go. We'll shut this one down and by the magic of uh, filmmaking, as they say. And here is the initial boot of the 5700 running uh, XFCE. And there you go, there's a, a NeoFetch display. There's the details, let's uh, Pentium E6700. And the amount of memory is 190 megabytes. See, on FreeBSD based systems, you use top as the measurement of memory, I don't use HTOP because that gives you an aggregate amount and it will be false. Because that's basically set up for Linux and they measure the memory in this different way. So, as you can see, at the moment we're 100, 162 megabytes of memory and I've just started um, the screen recorder and it really hasn't gone up. So, that's pretty cool. Just get rid of that. And again, you see, I'm not I, I'm not keen on the menu system, but we'll leave it. I know you can change it around, but I can't be bothered. Uh, you get your usual selection. There's been one or two things that I've added. I'm not going to go for a rundown of everything you get because, you know, you, you pretty much imagine what you can get. And you get, and, you know, you get the same thing as you do on the main Mate edition. You get LibreOffice installed and uh, whatnot. I don't normally go in for the aesthetics of an operating system, but... I kind of I kind of dig the simplicity. I, the the clicking on the right menu is something which I do on the Motif window manager anyway. So to me, it's second nature, and I like the way it's uh, organised. I would prefer to access it this way. I understand people prefer the whisker menu, but the right clicking is fine. I would just open up the settings, and one thing I did find it was difficult to actually grab the uh, the corner, of the window. That's you know that's just a little thing. Yeah, well, uh, the change the appearances, mainly of the um, overall in taskbar, etc. I do prefer that one. I'm not a fan of dark themes. Mm. Well, I like that one. It's kind of emotive. I like that. Uh, basic is what I've seen before and I've used before, but we'll change it back to how it was. Icons, of course. This also changes the icons in the uh, the menu bar or on the screen. Let's take it back to what it was before. The fonts. Fonts are a little bit on the short side, on the on the small side. So um, I'll just increase them a little bit. They're all uh, anti-aliasing. Slight hint. For me, that looks better. Okay, and settings. Yeah, we'll just leave that. Then you've got desktop settings, file manager, uh, you know, these various knickknacks here, window manager. So this one I'm going to, uh, it's still a bit laggy like it was on Mate one. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go through the various things. Hmm. I'll leave that and I'm going to choose Tweaks, I think. Yeah, this might be the one I want. And Compositor at the end is that one. Yeah, I'll see to that in a minute. So you can change your focus, your accessibility, your workplaces. Well, sorry, workspaces. We should change your workplace, that'd be good. I'm going to disable the compositing because it, uh, yeah, that's better. On this old system, it really does uh, increase performance. It's not uh, an indication of anything about Ghost PC, it's just this old machine. Takes away some of the bling, but you know. Um, session startup, mine uh, and settings. Are there. So, yeah. This one lets you get into the nitty gritty of uh, the detail of everything, really. A bit like GConf Editor, I think. 
Because last time I used that was a long time ago. Right, um, Office. Yeah, you get LibreOffice installed by default, which, uh, again, like the Matteo one, is a, is a pretty good um, thing to do. Because right out of the bat, you've got a working um, workstation or home desktop to get work done on. So that's a good move. And it goes through the same things as the other one. Again, it's nothing different. I mean, if you, you, if you watched my previous video on the Mate... 19.9 uh, review. You're probably getting a feeling of deja vu at the moment. Because really, all that's changed is that you're using the XFC uh, desktop. Everything else is the same. There's one or two things that didn't work as they worked on the main edition. Which is odd. Um, but we'll get to that later. When did I just see Twitter color emojis? Wow, okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that font. Hmm. I was gonna go down to the bottom one again. Yeah, Twitter color emojis. Huh? I must be getting old. But anyway, that's enough messing around with that. The version of OpenOffice, if you're interested, of OpenOffice of LibreOffice, if you're interested, is six point three point one point two. It's all very nice. And the amount of memory using is 300. Not bad. Hmm. Not bad at all. Or just under 300 now. We're going to minimize that. And then we're going to start up the browser. Which in this case is Firefox, which I installed. Or oh, did it come installed? I can't remember. No, it actually came installed. And we're going to go to uh, probably the best YouTube channel in the entire world. There we go. Any lagginess is down to my, um, well, my internet, which seems to be composed of uh, two tin cans and a string. And again, it's not the it's not the operating system, and in this time, it's not even the computer. It's the it's really uh, shoddy internet that I've got. There you go. Some people play with FreeBSD and we actually use it, and that is true. So yeah, we've got the uh, yeah, well, 1909. If you want to watch that one, that's a really good review. It's kind of weird doing this follow-up review to this. Ah, oh, right, okay. The amount of memory is uh, about 700 and odd, just short of 800, which is still not too bad. Yeah, this is always difficult to do a, a, a review of the more or less the same operating system, but you're doing just different um, desktop on top because you don't want to. I don't want to repeat myself. That's that's the danger. This is just a quick, you know, a quick um, GUI version of seeing what's going on with the amount of CPU usage and tasks going on. Really, it's just the same as using Top, but if you like um, a graphical representation, calendar. Volume, power button, you know, you can go restart, shut down, suspend, etc. Which I will test on the laptop in the future, actually. It's one thing I haven't done yet. Andrea, yeah. you got your workspaces. And yeah, I'm just going to increase them. I usually run on a system that I have you know, about six to eight workspaces. Um, in this case, I'll just increase them to six or four. I can't count. I prefer to access them using the middle button, to tell you the truth. It's, um, it seems a lot more efficient. Well, you know, preferences, really. And that's that's one beautiful thing about um, open source software. Right. Um, you don't get GIMP. This is a shame. But, you know, it's easy to install anything. You can go down to the graphical package manager, of course, uh, which is... Always a software station on GhostBSD. Or you can do it by command line. I actually used to doing it by command line in FreeBSD, but I really do appreciate the the graphic package manager uh, on GhostBSD. So, 
So, yeah, I'm just going to put GIMP. There you go. I'm going to find the meta package. Um, just checking the memory. Is that, no, that's the program itself. That's the meta package there. Okay. Might as well take that and take that one. There you go. And we're installing. So the memory is uh, 807 or 889. Look, oh, still under a gig. That's not bad. Oh, 900. So yeah, not bad at all. We're under a gigabyte of memory, which uh, is quite impressive. You disregard the reserve mount. You just go for the active in use. I'll just put that down there so we can keep, so I like keep a, a tab of it. If you use any other memory thing, we'll probably say one, but 1. 1.6 gigabytes used, and that's not quite, not quite accurate. It's going to take a while to download. So what I'll do, I will skip to the end, and we'll carry on from there. So it should be fully installed, and we'll just go down to uh, graphics. Uh, yeah, there it is. Look. There's GIMP. Yay. I really do think distribution should include GIMP. Uh, they used to do. A, little, a lot of many Linux ones used to do, but they dropped it. And um, It's a shame that Ghost PST has gone the same way. I mean, they could include it, I suppose, but, you know, it's easy to install. And, and that's one of the beautiful things about it. But to me, it is an essential piece of software, along with Inkscape. Always takes a while to initialize the first um, boot up of GIMP. There we go. Yeah, so there you are. Uh, let's do something, shall we? Shall we? Oh, I knew you can. I'm going to go down to. Do you know I've never noticed that before? Toilet paper? That's very interesting. Okay, we'll try toilet paper. <laughs> okay. No, I don't want that. Why on earth did I press that? Undo that. Right, what are we going to do? Now I know what I can do. Considering this is toilet paper, I'm going to draw a... Uh, my interpretation of a familiar emoji. In my very limited uh, drawing skills. There you go. Let's have a look for uh, suitable colour. Let's go down to that. Everybody wondering Marvel as I wildly stab for the right colour. There we go. Uh, no, I didn't want that one. What on earth am I doing? I'm not used to this dark theme. I can't see anything on it. There you go. There's a fill. It's not perfect. Still got a white line around it, but you know. And we need some eyes. One big eye there. That's why. It's already set. Fill that in. And. Another one. Again. Same steps. Fill it in. I'm not, I can't remember what the mouth goes like in the mood. I think it's a smile. But, but I'm just going to do a. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's just like a. Semi open mouth really. No, let's go down that. Like that. And we'll need a couple of pupils. No, no, I'll just do that one first. Fill that one in. Pupils on that. Again. It's kind of a strange, crazy looking uh, emoji, but hey, you know, there we go. And there's my interpretation of a, a famous emoji. I'm not going to win no prizes, but it'll do. And the amount of memory is 972. So, you know, we've got browser running, office open, uh, screen recording, and now uh, a picture in GIMP, and we've still not hit a gigabyte. 
That's pretty good memory management. Not bad at all. Can we see if we can get the um, the memory up? Let's have a look, see if we can push it past. Here, goodbye. Just going to minimise everything. Right. Put a game on, I think. It's one thing I'm not going to cover in this particular review, really, is games. I'm going to do one game. Um, sea Haven, okay. We'll choose this one. Sea Haven Towers. I think that's a no-no. We'll try again. I'm not going to give up. We'll install a game just to test the system. Python is still giving some... Hassle down there. And the game obviously hasn't loaded. Hasn't been installed. We'll try software station again. Maybe I should have... Uh, it might clear things up, we'll see. We'll try a new game uh, instead. Rescue. I haven't tried it before, don't know what it's like. I've heard it's some kind of uh, like a Star Trek game of old in the olden days. We'll see. Um, Python seems to be still there, but we'll see how this works. Let's install him. Right, almost finished, I think. And it has. I don't know if it was meant to have closed down, but it did. And Python is still running in the background. We will check whether or not the game has been installed. And yeah, games are now there. And there it is. So I didn't know what happened with that. So, um, okay. I don't know if it was a bug or just my old system, but I've never encountered that before. Python is still running there, so maybe I should kill that. But I'm going to leave it. And this is um, a modern representation of a Star Trek game, as, uh, as I was led to believe, and it is. I have no idea what I'm doing, of course. Um, impulse warp, I don't know, I'm getting attacked, things are blowing up. Yeah, boom, 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 pew, pew, pew. Yeah, and I'm gone. Uh, you are dead, yes, of course. Right, okay, dog. Yeah, and um, I think we went over to gig earlier, but it took all that to do so. It does. I'm just going to close down the. Uh, yes, I don't know. Very good. You can select it in the menu. It goes to the running one. That's pretty cool. Right. Okay. I'm just going to. Uh, I'm going to test printing because. Yeah. See, normally, sometimes what would happen is, when I tried this pre previously, it picked up my printer on the uh, network, and by this time it didn't. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on. It could well be that Python process is uh, interfering with um, everything. But it does work. It did detect the printer, uh, which is kind of a plus. As I did with the... Um, the Mate release, I'm going to test the scanner. So I've closed all the processes down except for simple screen recorder, of course, or you won't be able to see the video. And I'm just going to try, with it multimedia? No, nah, it's not that one. It's um, new pulse, pulse audio. There's your scan light. And it picks up the scanner, which is good. Ah, uh, which is uh, opening the selected scanner failed. Hmm. Last time under the Mate one it worked. So I don't know what the difference is this time. It, like I say, it could be the Python process, um, which is 
Um, running out of control, <laughs> maybe that's something to do with it, but I don't know. And finally, what I think we'll do is we'll just give it a quick uh, Linus. I know it's not the most, um, perhaps not the most accurate um, system audit software that you can use, but I like to use it, and because I've used it previously, I use it as a, as a kind of a benchmark. I, I know in my mind the score which I'm aiming for. So it's the latest version, of course, just like the other one. And I think we got 56. I can't remember. 56, I think. The overall score of 56 for a, a desktop-orientated uh, OS is not too bad. Like I say, you have to make some leeway. You have to trade off uh, a little bit of security for access. Otherwise, some things wouldn't work. Right, 57. Okay. That's about right. That's, you know, that's, that's about what we got last time. Right. What do I think of this? Well, I think it's less polished than the Marte one. Um, I think that goes without saying. And this is a community edition. And... Within its own right, it's a decent operating system. It's a good representation of what Ghost PST can be. I had one or two glitches with the the software station, but that I think is uh, it, it, that, that was a one-off because then it worked afterwards, and I should have killed the Python script or the the Python processor that was running in the background, but it still worked and the system was still responsive. Um, the scanner didn't work; well, it detected it, but it didn't work, which was odd. And the printer wasn't detected on the network. So a couple of misses and one one glitch. But you know something, that's not that's not a reason not to use this. And it might have been just my hardware. Some of my hardware is really old. And if you've got newer hardware or you're using this on a, a newer computer with more more memory, more CPU wriggle room, I think you'll be just fine. I think if you like FFCE, I think there's plenty of room to work on. It's very basic. And with um, plenty of room there for you to put your own stamp on it, I think. So would I use this? I think I'd favor the Mate version, which I always do prefer Mate, but yes, I would use this. It's another competent release by the GhostBSD um, community in this respect and team. And excellent. Onwards and upwards, guys and girls. Anyway, so thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out, please consider subscribing, as this really helps me help you.